Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Well, who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board certified criminal defense lawyer with our content genius, Michael Rivers. Uh, we're coming to you. Today we're reacting to the cop who doesn't realize he's going to jail for being a pedo. So anybody that has anything to do with kids, guess what? You're not a sympathetic dude. You're going to jail, period. Period, period, period. And guess what? And when you go to jail, you best not sleep on your stomach because the guys in jail call them chomos. And chomos are usually either in protective custody or they get harassed or sometimes even killed. So this is a cop. Uh, so before we get to this, this is brought to you by eSign.com. eSign.com is a very effective way to do just about anything. Is there any kind of business that you need to do? Like, let's say you just get taken into custody and you didn't realize that was going to happen. So you didn't take care of any of your business that you had to. So you call your mommy because you lived in her basement and... She's going to have to do all kinds of things and she can do it with eSign. eSign.com because if it's not eSign, nobody signs. eSign.com is a very effective way to remotely do business. I do business by eSign. In fact, if I have a client that's out of state or if I just need to get it done quickly because they have a trouble coming into the office, I can just eSign them a document. You download the app. You get three free signatures a month. It's an easy and effective way to remotely do business. Now, Let's talk about this. Oh, let's just play it because I haven't seen this uh, video. And so our content genius, Michael, thought I might have some good things or some comical things to say about the pedal. I have never seen a more despicable set of facts as I've seen in this case. There's two types of cases that I just really don't like. Anything to do with children and domestic abusers. Both of them have an element to it where the defendant is not, doesn't take responsibility and... These were the remarks of the judge who presided over the case of Jalen Fleer, a San Diego County Sheriff's deputy. The 27-year-old looked clean as a whistle in his day-to-day -day routine, but a private investigation caught up to him, leading to an interrogation that led to a search, which then led to a reveal of over 20 felony charges. They have a network of um, cyber sleuths. They used to be like they'd bust the main ring and then they would, they'd find your email in there and then get a search warrant based on that. S kind of like that, cops will uh, set people up with chats and, you know, pose as, as kids. In this video, we'll take you through the interrogation that finally put this monster behind bars. Special thanks to 5-0 Patrol for sharing the original interrogation clip. Jalen Fleer was a San Diego County Sheriff's deputy who once starred for Santana High School in baseball and football. He is married and was expecting a baby at the time, but instead came the San Diego County Crime Stoppers who received tips regarding the sheriff's quote-unquote lewd behavior. And here's the thing. You're in a high-profile position as a deputy. People are going to know that you're a deputy, and it's going to get out. So it's not a safe thing to do. But every time I've had a, somebody come to me with any of these kinds of cases, they almost always have a really decent looking wife and something really decent going on at home, but they just can't fucking handle it. Do a lot of evidence that needed answers. This is how the interrogation went down. The story with us, of course, in regards to the, um, the report that we're investigating, okay. you're not under arrest and you are not being detained. Okay. Do you understand? When you hear those words, you're not under arrest, you're not being detained, get the fuck up and walk away. Period. Do you understand? Yeah. Because the interrogator is acting upon tips from a non-profit organization, she has to set the disclaimer that this interrogation is voluntary and that he can leave whenever he wants to. He can even choose to not answer any important questions and can request a lawyer anytime he wants. But the interrogator has such a simple and open communication with Jalen that he looks at this interrogation like a conversation. Later on, he starts to open up. How dumb do you have to be? You're a cop. You know, you know what you've been doing. Your radar should be up. Open up about himself. Um, football, baseball. Went to Grossmont College for a little bit. Played baseball there. And there's only one reason for you to be dragged into a room by yourself 
you know, with with an investigator. Um, I got a job here. Worked at exporting goods before this, um, so this is my second job. Okay. So I work in with this department for coming up on five years now. And, okay. So baseball seemed pretty important to you back yeah, in high school. Fun, yeah. um, what position? Uh, pitcher. Cool. How's your arm holding up? I mean, soreness every once in a while, but I haven't thrown it for a while. So. Yeah, no, it still kills me. Um, I played softball. Okay, nice. Work. So I was, yeah, um, third. And you, you listen to the friendly nature of the investigator. You know, just calm. It's like she's not intimating at all the seriousness of what she's investigating, which is engaging. Short, center, and pitcher. Here in San Diego? Yeah, down um, uh, Hilltop Indian Valley. And have you always worked corrections? Uh, yeah, I attempted to go out to the patrol, went to the academy. Things didn't work out there, so I came back here. Did you have fun at the academy while you were oh, there? Oh, yeah, I enjoy it. It's good. I mean, camaraderie and stuff like that. So. Okay. Um, but weren't they a little old for you? Married? How many kids? Oh, yeah. Uh, married. Recently got married this last year in September. Okay. Um, we have a kid due on the way in August. Oh. Imagine later on his wife when she finds this stuff out. Imagine how shy. Now she's going to be raising this kid alone. Okay. Boy, girl. Boy. Very nice. Unfortunately. Um, <laughs> unfortunately. What are you like hoping for? Oh, no. And how this investigator, knowing what is how she can keep this light attitude, knowing what what the gravity of what she's going to be asking him. Oh no, no I said looking forward. To oh, it. looking yeah. forward. I thought you said unfortunately. I'm no, like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, that's cool. Um, and your wife, how long have you known her? Uh, actually, preschool. Um, so in my mind's eye, if I'm this cop, I'm like, what the hell are you asking me all these questions for? You know, I, I mean, he's a cop. He should know. Yeah, we met in preschool, went separate ways. Um, met her back in high school. Things like I was trying to date her, but she was playing, playing it hard to get again. Yeah. Um, then college came around, tried again, and actually ran into her in PB like a little, about three years ago. Okay. And then, yeah, we reconnected then and got, got married. Sparked. Had a family, a lot of house. Um, and I hear your schedule recently changed. How do you feel? But I got married, got a good job, got a, married, bought a house, had a kid. I mean, he's building, right? Be careful when you build that you don't have something in there that will just knock it right down. I feel about oh, the schedule it's change. Yeah. yeah, seven, twelve and a half in a row kills you. Seven off is nice, but it flies by. So yeah, and then the seven drag yeah. once you're here. So at least you're on your last day today, yeah. right? This entire dis that, that is probably his last day. Discussion is important because it will create a pattern of events that could lead to a bigger crime. First, she establishes the background. And now she moves on to the place where the crime happened, social media. So, um, how about social media? Are you active on social media at all? Uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, had Snapchat back in the day, got rid of that with my wife. We got caught in the academy with, with her and stuff, some stuff. But, hmm. uh, Can you tell me about that? or? Um, I mean, it was with another recruit in the academy. But... We cheated on his wife. Okay. So you're um, communicating with another recruit? I was back in, I stopped, everything got cut off, um, got rid of, I mean, I didn't delete the Snapchat, I just got deleted the app, so okay. I haven't used it for like, I don't know, two, a year and a half now. Okay. Uh, so on Facebook, just because I like to jot down everybody's social media when I can, um, what's your mm -hmm. Facebook login, like your um, username? Uh, I think just under Jalen Fleer. It's your name? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and then you said Instagram? Sorry? Instagram, yeah. Okay. Now remember what I said about about um, what you do online? It, it's a permanent record. I mean, and so they you can go back and get just about anything. What's your Instagram username? Uh, I think. Okay. So they're talking to him about, you know, now that it's just inch by inch by inch. How this guy doesn't at this point just get up and walk away? Because he, he has to know. How does he not know where they're going? Is he that much of an adult? And then you said you got rid of Snapchat, but when you did have it, what was it? Um, just Jalen Flair. Jalen Flair? Yeah. And here's the other thing. You're a cop pedo in jail? You talk about somebody being completely at risk? That's it. Okay.
So the one that you had there, has that so that account since been deleted or just deactivated that one, the? Yeah, just just delete the app. I think it's I think it's still there. Okay. And I know when it comes to um, Facebook, you connect it to an email address. Do you know yep. what email address is connected to it? See, these are all the forensic things that are super important. And then your Instagram account with the same email? I think so, yeah. Okay. And I know sometimes with Snapchat, they'll have you either sign up with a phone number or an email. I believe it's my phone number. Okay. Very cool. So, um... By knowing his social accounts, the interrogator is trying to piece Jalen's social accounts with the anonymous tips so that a connection can be verified. By now, Jalen is too open with his social accounts, and it took him this long to ask the obvious question. I don't know, do you have any questions for me before I kind of... Um, I will ask what this is about. Yeah, so we're looking into some allegations that were made. We're kind of, it, it started with a Crime Stopper report, so we're just kind of okay. going from there. Um, uh, we did receive um, a picture um, that, um, you know, when we looked into it, it looks similar to you, so I don't know if yeah. you can take a look at the picture and just tell me if you've seen this picture before. Oh, I have like 15 million things here. Okay. I have 15 million things here. And they're all about me? <laughs> I need a lawyer, fast. So this picture right here. Yeah, that's definitely me, I'm the gross one. Okay, so um, this picture right here, how old were you when it was taken? Uh, 20. 20? Have you ever used this picture on any social media? And see, that's a common thing. So he, he looks a little bit younger there. And looks like he could be in high school. And that would be the perfect bait. Um, I think it was Snapchat back in the day, yeah. Okay. All right. Have you ever shared this picture with anybody on Snapchat? Um, yeah, probably with my wife, to be honest. Um, I mean, obviously I talked to other girls back in the day too, but I can't remember. Okay. Um, if you had to guesstimate how many times you may have shared the photo, how many times? 3,642. So that one, maybe just a couple times, once or twice. Okay. So definitely to your wife. Yeah. Okay. So you've used that photo for your wife and you were about 20 years old in the photo. You did share it on Snapchat. Um, and then... So she's... She, this is also a common investigative technique where you just repeat everything the person said. Maybe some other girls you were talking to? I mean, yeah, this was a long time ago, so I don't really remember who it was. Okay. Um, have you ever posted it as, like, your profile photo or no, that one, ever no, no. posted on Instagram? No. Oh, I forgot to ask you. Are your accounts, is your Instagram and your Facebook, are they private? To add somebody. Yeah, I believe I had to, yeah. You can't yeah, just. Request a friend. Yeah, you can't just be anyone. So that one's at least a little bit better where it's, like, you have to actively mm -hmm. search for somebody, right? You in the photo, um, and is that a gross font? Is that gross font? Yeah, it's gross font Okay, cool. This picture here was the first piece of evidence. The interrogator wanted to know how the quote-unquote anonymous tip could get a hold of a selfie like that. You can't download pictures of each other on Snapchat unless you actually send them. And it was never uploaded on Facebook and Instagram, so this means that he intentionally sent this picture to someone who is, according to the interrogator, a quote-unquote Young female on Snapchat. How does he not know at this point? Because he knows who he sent that photo to, right? And even if it's just chatting with uh, somebody underage, you're soliciting sex for somebody who's underage. And that's illegal. It's a felony. Based on Jalen's facial expressions, you can tell that he's now realizing where this is going. Your schedule. I know that um, you work every seven days on and seven days off. What is your wife's schedule? She's every Friday, Saturday off, um, day shift, so typical nine to nine to five. Okay, so she works nine to five and you work like the complete opposite schedule? Depends. Every three months we rotate, days and nights. Okay. And how long have you been on nights now? Nights now? Probably, probably a little over a month now, a month and a half. Can I ask, is this something I might, I should have lawyers on? So right now. So, <laughs> he knows he can get up and walk out and I would say at this point I no but yeah now, I, and I'll go over the behavior with you you know we're investigating allegations and one might ask should he be Mirandized no why not because he's in he's not in custody Miranda only applies where there's in custody interrogation there's interrogation but he was told he's free to leave so you don't have to advise him of his rights
allegations that were made that you were communicating with a younger female on Snapchat and potentially some material might have been shared. Okay. Um, some photos, some images, stuff like that. So we, of course, want to be able to hear what happened from your side. If that, in fact, did occur or if it didn't occur, we want to always Everyone that. that. The interrogator now learns his schedule, which will help her fit the pattern of the investigation. He wants... But she already knew his schedule because he, she could get the schedule from employment records. Jumps in to ask if this is something that he should have his lawyers on. Once again, the interrogator's response puts him at ease that he's not being treated as a criminal and they're only investigating allegations. We're only investigating allegations about you doing something with a minor. <laughs> they don't, it doesn't get much more serious than that. The first time she mentioned texting the quote-unquote young female on Snapchat, he didn't respond much. But this time, he gave an answer that led to the revelation of his Tinder profile. And from your side, if that in fact did occur, or if it didn't occur, we want to always... Everyone that I talked to, I mean, it was about my age, I remember. Okay. Um, so who have you talked to? My wife. Um, I mean, this was back then when I had, I had Tinder. He describes that the only use of Tinder was when he met an ex-girlfriend. They dated for three years, and then he got married to his wife, who he had known since preschool. So he's protecting his image. Now, in case you're wondering why we haven't displayed the second picture, it's because it's a nude picture. He recalls that the only person who had access to this picture was his ex's Tinder account and his current wife. His wife is loyal enough to not leak it, and even though he had a bad breakup, his ex would not leak that picture. You can tell he's denying to share the real source of this picture because deep down he's well aware of who he sent it to. So, I mean, I met girls on Tinder and stuff back in the day. And yes, yeah, I'm safe stuff, but I don't know who would save a picture like that. I mean, a nude, maybe, yeah, he would save. Not that one. Hmm. Who would? Millions of fucking people. Millions of people would save it. And you know exactly what you did, when you did it, and how you did it. Now... Now, when you lie here in this situation, you're just digging a deeper hole. And there's nothing wrong with this photo, right? It's just no, you. No, I agree. I just, I don't know how it would get in the hands of a younger person. I don't know. Okay. There were also some conversations that were exchanged between you and this person. You can tell, look, he, he went from being relaxed. Now he's got his arms crossed. He's licking his lips. You can tell he's breathing a little harder. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't talk to anybody younger, though. Not on Snapchat? No. Not recently? Not recently, no. He not only continues to deny sending this picture, but also sending this picture to a younger person, quote-unquote, recently. The word recently implies that he may have sent it to someone a long while back who he's not trying to disclose. Now, you said all of your social media accounts are private, right? Yeah. And I know you're a law enforcement officer, so I know that you've also taken the time to make your plates confidential. I mean, back in the day, I yeah. don't think my current ones are, though. Um, I mean, obviously, I ran your plates. Okay. <laughs> so you're okay. still... So obviously, I ran your plates. How this guy is even still sitting there is beyond me. Still driving the Ford Fusion? Yeah. And it's is it black or gray? It's gray. Okay. And you got tinted windows on it still? Yeah. And so... Um, uh, you know, when it comes to the photo, I really kind of just, I really want to understand why this person would be in possession of the photo. But the only one who could really help me with that is you. Yeah. No, I, don't, I couldn't tell you that. I don't know. No. Okay. Well, along with the photo came... And here's the thing. When somebody sends something, there's a, there's a digital footprint everywhere in pretty much almost everything we do nowadays. So they're going to know exactly where he was, what he was doing, and how that photo got sent. And that's called metadata. That's all the data that's, you know about your personal life okay um and based on some of the information you share with me today it seems to add up okay um so is there any reason why the person would see their you their you and share your information it sounds like it'd be someone that knows me then obviously um but i don't know who i don't have any enemies that would be doing something like that with somebody else mm, murmur can i ask what information was shared what they they know? Um, well, um, we know that you're a baseball player. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people know that. Yeah. So, so that information was kind of shared. Okay. Um, She's so tricky, you know. I, 
and she's very being very careful but also nice and engaging but you can tell he's starting to get worried look at his face doesn't look like when he first sat down your work schedule it's been five years now i've worked here specifically the transition to seven days on seven days off really so maybe it corresponds with the seven days off so let's let's just take a guess at this because I, I haven't seen the rest of this. So your wife, you don't you don't have any really responsibilities at home. You're seven days seven days seven days on seven days off. So your wife's at work. Now you've got all this time during those seven days. An idle mind is the devil's playground. So let's take it back a little bit. The reason why the interrogator used the word recently is because the sender knew his current work schedule, something that was enforced just a few months before this interrogation. Now the information's not adding up, and it's clearly implicating Jalen. Now we have a username, J178211. 17 is the college jersey number, 82 was the high school jersey number, and 2011 was the graduation year. Now, he claims to have, quote-unquote, never heard of this account, but it suggests that this account sent the nude pictures. Hmm, <laughs> things are not looking good for him. You shared any images of your penis with anyone? Yeah. Okay. And Can I just, I, I know a lot of people do it, but let me just tell you something, gentlemen. The wiener ain't that pretty. And sending it to somebody... I, I, I've never seen it really benefit anybody, honestly. But hey, that's just me. I'm I'm an old white dude from the you know Minneapolis. And how many times would you say you've done that? A lot. A lot because I'm super proud of my dick. I mean, give me a break. A lot. Oh, uh, does it have earrings on it or what? I mean, do you dress it up? I mean, <laughs> God. Can you a lot. Kind of explain that a little bit more to me. I mean, my wife, my ex girl. My, my, and he keeps going back to that. My wife, my ex girlfriend. You know, when, when his he broke up with his ex girlfriend, she says, "I'm breaking you up with you," and she said, "Why?" And uh, she said, "Cause you're a pedophile." And he said, "Well, that's a pretty big word for a twelve year old." I have a day Tinder and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you know how Tinder is. Um, high school, even yeah, junior high. It, did you ever share, share any videos of you having sex with anyone? With anyone? No. I've always had personal... Why the fuck are you still sitting there? <laughs> you know what this is about now. You're not an idiot. Or are you? Personal videos. But you are. Life, I was hit. And my ex actually had one, but... What does your ex look like? She's blonde. She's blonde? Um, so you've never shared any videos? No, I have not, no. Just still shots? Yeah. So um, when it comes to the Crime Stopper that we're investigating and the Snapchat account, um, and of course your phone number and everything in connection with it and some of the combinations of numbers and everything there, you can understand why obviously yeah, no, it's we have a growing nice, concern. Yeah, it's um, and of course your picture is attached to it, yeah. right? Um, which is even more. I was framed. I was absolutely framed. That's not me. Oh, that is my wiener. Or like either someone's... Can I ask what... You said you got new ones too. There were images that were shared, yes, that... Can um, I ask? I know, I'm sure you got them here. Can I ask to see what they are? You want to see the picture? Yeah, so I can get an idea. Do I want to get an idea? Yeah. Um, so, I don't actually have a clear shot of one. No. Yeah, so I can't... I did not okay, I understand. print yeah. out those pictures. I would pictures. talk to a lawyer because this is kind of, this is, I'm uncomfortable with this. This is weird. So of course, it. like, um, you definitely have the ability to do that. So now normally when you're in custody and there's an interrogation and you ask for a lawyer, they have to stop questioning. But he can leave at any time. So they don't necessarily have to stop because Miranda's not implicated here. Of course, yeah. you know, this is completely voluntary. Okay. Um, and so... Um, I just don't want to get caught up on something. I'm working this career. I don't want to get caught up on something. I fully understand. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> you already know that you are. 
So um, you can, yes, 100% elect not to speak with us. You are not under arrest at this time. Yeah, I understand. Um, obviously, given the fact that we're here and the fact... I guarantee you his heart is beating 150 beats a minute. Pounding, pounding, pounding. And his, his palms are sweaty and uh, his mouth is dry. That we're speaking to you. I know that your bosses are going to want to speak no with you afterwards. Yeah, yeah. In this part, the interrogator has confirmed some details which are vital to the investigation. It was only after the discussion of the nudes that he finally decided not share further. And here's what here's what I think that the next step. He goes and sees his supervisors, and then they got to take his guns and stuff away, and find out if he's got any guns at home. But another interrogator in the room, who was just observing, entered to ask three questions of her own. I have a couple of questions, but yeah, you don't want to answer, or can I ask you the questions? Because you can choose to answer or not answer. So if I ask you a question and you're like, I don't want to answer that, yeah, you can no, tell me that. Um, one of my questions was, I think I missed it, but when was the last time that you had Snapchat? Because um, I know you said you deleted it, but I didn't hear when you deleted it. I never, I just deleted the app. I deleted that one. So when he says, I just deleted the app, I didn't delete my account, means he didn't want somebody to look at his phone and see what he sent or what it was on his phone. But if he still has the account, you know, anybody that was his friend uh, on Snapchat would still be his friend. Only one reason to do that. It's because you're being sneaky. In the academy. In the academy. When did you go to the academy? It's like a little over a year ago. Year, a year ago, yeah. so in 2019? Yeah, right at the beginning of 2019, January. Okay, and then um, what years did you go to college at Grossmont? Uh, 2011 to about 2013, okay. 14. And then I just want to make sure that we all understand each other. When my partner says um, a younger female, yeah. you understand that we mean someone under the age of 18? Yeah, that's obviously why you're here. You, you understand that? Yeah. Okay. It's obviously why you're here. I still want a lawyer, but I'm still going to sit here even though this is voluntary. He could have gotten up right away and walked out. But at some point, you can have an interrogation like this that becomes custodial because at some point, if he gives enough information, um, he might not be free to go. I have a younger sister, yeah, she's 19 right now. 20, 20 sorry. Oh, okay. And then uh, my last question was, mm -hmm. she was asking about the house and the decorations of your house. In any of your rooms in your house, do you have that new, um, that new look where they have like the barn door, um, outer rail type thing? It's like a country, I don't know what you would call the reason they're asking for that is because that gives a time frame because he just got the house, right? Just got the wife, right? And now a kid's on the way. Well, I'm sure in one of the pictures, they had that same barn door kind of apparatus set, set up. We call it. I see it a lot on, yeah. on like yeah. those DIY shows. Yes. Do you have those in the house? Have one, yeah. Okay. Um. Here's what the three questions were confirming. Firstly, he deleted the app, not the account, so chances are that he could reinstall, use, and later delete it to look clean to his wife. After all, their schedules don't match, so he might reinstall it when she's not around. Because remember earlier he said he deleted it because he was his wife busted him. Secondly, the college years were confirmed just to set a timeline of activities. And the third question was just a clarification in case he later ends up denying what they meant. After these three questions, he chose to have a lawyer present and denied answering any more questions. By law, he was free to leave. But that was after he turned over everything to Johnny Law. With the next step, um, however, I'm going to go ahead and pull some documents here um, for you. So there are a few steps that we're going to be taking after this. Again, you are not being detained by us or anything, but we are acting um, on behalf of the court moving forward. Okay. Okay. So I will give you a chance to read through this. Um, this is a... And these cases aren't cheap, and a young guy like this can't afford somebody like me. I can guarantee you that. So I will give you a chance to read through this. Um, this is a uh, search warrant. That... What? I thought you were just being my friend. <laughs> so they serve him with a search warrant so they can look through his phone was granted this afternoon by a judge. 
um, the warrant um, does allow us uh, to grab some DNA swabs from you. DNA. Uh-oh. That's even worse. Because if they want DNA, that means he met up with her. Okay. Um, as well as uh, any mobile devices that might be in your possession um, or potentially in your locker. Do you have your personal phone with you here? I do have one. Okay. Yeah. Is it inside your locker? It's on my person right now. Okay. So we'll... If you want to go ahead and hand it to us, we definitely don't need to go in and grab it from you. Okay. Um, but the, the search warrant does require that we take it from you. Okay. Okay. Um, additionally, um, it does allow us to have access to your vehicle. Okay. Um, is your vehicle parked here? It's parked a few blocks away. Okay. Do you remember exactly where you are? It's over across from Cap's Pizza over there. Cap's Pizza? Yeah. And is it like in a parking, it's in a parking lot. lot? Okay. Um, is it like one of those paid parking lots? Yeah. Okay, so Caps Pizza. I'll put the note on that. Um, so the warrant does allow for us to also process your vehicle. You guys are going to take my vehicle? No, we're going to process it here. After that, we will also have access um, to your locker. Are your vehicle keys inside your locker? Uh, my vehicle keys are in my vehicle right now. They're in your vehicle? Yeah. So you have a code? I have a code. Okay. Would you mind sharing that code with us? Um, am I allowed a lawyer to say no to that? Well, the warrant allows for us to have access to your vehicle. Lynn, I just still don't want to have to tell you. Okay. Yeah, yeah so you break it. Yeah, truck. that's fine. Yeah, I'll give it up to you. Okay. Um, I'll jot it down. Um, Thank you. I don't even know the number. I know the young. Now he's realized that there's no turning back as the so-called anonymous tips turned into an investigation and finally turned into a search warrant for everything he owns. Literally everything. The officer was later put on desk duty for a couple of weeks until the investigation went its course. His DNA swabs and everything were collected, and then in came the shocking revelations. In the court case of People v. Fleer, there were four victims between the ages of 12 and 14, but... 12. 12 years old. Prosecutors allege Fleer to have contacted more than 40 who described themselves as minors. So these kinds of cases are come out of a compulsion because you, he's clearly addicted to sex and he's addicted to sex with young people. And, you, and you, you're just going to do this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. The prosecutors read graphic letters of his encounters in the court. He even engaged in sex acts with a 14-year-old girl and contacted numerous other underage girls over social media with the... How the fuck could you do this, being a cop and knowing the risks? I mean, you know, some guy tries to do this to my daughter. Guess what? I'm going to the cops. I'm doing everything I possibly can to fuck your life up. You know, I mean, and... But th this is just not okay. Aim of meeting up for sex... Count 6 said on or about April 8th that Fleer unlawfully participated in an act of oral copulation with a person under the age of 16. And Count 7 and 8 said Fleer lewdly committed a lascivious act upon the body of a child 14 or 15 years of age. Jalen Fleer. When you have multiple victims like this, you know, most states have typical guidelines. But there are states where this would be a life sentence. Fleer pled guilty to 20 felony and misdemeanor charges 20. and was sentenced to 10 to 12 years in state prison with no probation. And he will have to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. What started as an investigation in 2021 led to the arrest of this madman in 2021. At the same time, we have to commend the efforts by the interrogator here, who was able to take out so much of the information from him voluntarily. But even if he had refused to talk, well, the search warrant had already come through, so there was no... So we came across... I, I've seen this one on TikTok, uh, just a little snippets of it. I haven't seen the whole thing before like this. And this is thanks to the villains. He does a pretty good job. But to be honest with you, they didn't really need his testimony for anything. Um, they, had a, it, they just needed his devices to confirm X, Y, and Z. And then they had the statements from, what, 20 or so people... 20 counts. That's a lot. The fact that they, that he only got 10 to 12 years, that's a bargain. That is a bargain. On one count in Minnesota, it's 144-month mandatory minimum. In some jurisdictions, it's life. 
which I don't agree with that a life sentence on something like this because it it encourages a homicide. But he is never going to work in this law enforcement officer again. He is going to have an incredibly hard time in prison. Without a doubt, he's going to have it. I mean, cops have a hard time anyway. But you're a sex offender, a chomo with with uh, you know, and being a cop, I he's going to have he's going to have to probably be in protective custody, which is a little bit like isolation for most of his prison stint. So think about where you're loyalty lies think about where your partner lies and think about the lies that you're going to tell tomorrow because everything catches up to you sooner or later so this is just our little reaction to the cop realizing he's going to jail for being a pedophile we'll see you next time here on criminal lawyer reacts i'm bruce rivers board certified criminal defense lawyer with our content genius michael rivers make sure you subscribe follow us on instagram follow us on twitter Sign up for Patreon. And we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self-snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self-snitching gon' get you put away. 23-hour lockdown, please, is that my goal?